The House of Commons is not just a seat of political intrigue or a tourist destination. It's also a workplace. But it's a workplace with a particular problem with bullying and with sexual harassment. We've heard a number of allegations against MPs and not just backbench MPs at the bottom of the pile. These accusations run all the way to the top to John Burko, the Speaker of the House of Commons. And the people making these allegations are public servants who've dedicated their lives to making our Parliament work. This group is always there, even in the biggest parliamentary moments. But you probably never really look at them. He was the future once. <laughs> You might have spotted some of them, perhaps the people down here, who, until recently, routinely wore wigs to sittings. Nothing is really impossible if you put your mind to it. After all, as I once said, I was the future once. <laughs> now, politicians come and go, but this little army of public servants, they're always there, in the chamber, and committees these people work as something known as the house of Commons service and they have a range of job titles clerks inquiry managers committee specialists but together we're going to refer to them by the term by which they're known to the rest of Westminster the clerks these are the people who run committee inquiries and who quietly umpire the business of the House. Newsnight has heard shocking testimony that women in these roles face a particular problem. Newsnight has spoken to dozens of current and former clerks who allege to us that they face a real issue with sexual harassment and bullying by MPs. Almost all had reasons to request anonymity usually because they still work in Westminster or Whitehall. He sort of manoeuvred me out into the corridor and um, put, his, put his arms around me and um, kissed me on the lips and I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't force him off because he my arms were um, against my chest and he was holding me so tightly that I couldn't push him away. I made a chocolate cake for one of my colleagues' birthday and I was just putting the finishing touches before we had our end of the day little celebration. And I was kneeling, putting the, you know, the rest of the icing on the cake and the MP in question he came in and laughed and came and stood right over me. I remember it being very overbearingly close and him saying, right where you belong, on your knees with a face full of chocolate. The MP exploded at me so aggressively that my colleague stood between us to physically shield him from me. Those cases run from the 1990s through into recent years. And in that time, the House has changed its HR policies several times. But there's one constant that we keep hearing about. Women do not feel that if they complain to the House authorities, their concerns will be taken seriously. In part, because the culture of the House emphasises the idea that clerks need to be tough. From the day that you start working uh, in the House of Commons, there can be situations where you're required to deliver difficult messages. And in those circumstances, it's um, seen as very important to be robust. Um, and if you have pushback from members, to be resilient and to be able to, to hold your ground and um, to, to, to respond appropriately. Um, and that is in, in entirely appropriate for, for staff. The difficulty is when that extends to when a, a member behaves inappropriately towards you, you're still expected to just put up with that situation. Clerks talk a lot about resilience, but it doesn't mean in the House of Commons what it means outside. It means absorbing behaviour from members of parliament and also senior clerks. Um, 
and not questioning it or not complaining about it. And when you say behaviour, I mean, we're talking harassment, bullying. Yeah. They expect you to sort of suck it up and yeah. not make a fuss. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, deemed to be a trait of a successful clerk in the house is your ability to to absorb and be resilient, yeah. We found that women working for the Commons often feel that they pay the price of complaining about misconduct. This former clerk's managers attempted to deal with the sexual harassment by an MP that she described earlier. Having spoken to the MP and some other senior management team members, she didn't tell me who, um, that the best course of action would be to move me from that committee. So he harasses you, mm -hmm. the solution is he gets a quiet word mm -hmm. and you have to change jobs? Yes. I mean, that doesn't seem like a reasonable response to no. workplace harassment. No, no, not, not at all. And I didn't want to. I really enjoyed what I was doing there and I really enjoyed my team. And despite what was going on, I didn't want to move. That's something of a theme that we found. Clerks have told us that they fear if they raise complaints about MPs, it'll just be them who's moved, not the MP. They also fear that complaining just marks their cards as weak or sensitive or a troublemaker. One of the women we've heard from did complain to her manager about sexual assault by an MP early in her career in the 1990s. Nothing happened. She was harassed throughout her time there. So here's how she felt by the end of a long career in the house. There was absolutely no point in me reporting anything because I would have been made to feel that I wasn't resilient or tough enough. So one of your friends told us they thought that they had done a bit better than you in the House of Commons, even though they thought you were more talented because she had stayed quiet and you hadn't. Do you think that's possible? I think that's possible. I think I'm not alone as a woman in feeling inferior in the workplace and that's something that I've carried with me for quite a long time. People are still fearful about speaking out because there are recent examples where people end up getting moved or leaving the house in relation to raising these things. Management have told us to report stuff but I think if I raised something I'd be moved. In all my time here I haven't seen one case go against a member. Let's start naming some names. This is the Tory MP for the Reekin, Mark Pritchard. We've heard time and again about his reputation among women clerks. He was particularly nasty to those he felt were below him. I've witnessed him sort of explode um, at people. He was known for having a dreadful temper. The people in the room who were administering to the needs of the committee were all female and uh, we got, got called a, a useless gaggle of girls or something along those lines. I wish I remembered the exact phrase. His attitude is vile. I remember him once giving a female clerk a dressing down in front of everyone. The way that he spoke was threatening and aggressive. So I've seen him with my own eyes start screaming at people for nothing, really. He went mad at me. It got very personal. He said something like, you stupid young woman, you haven't got a fucking clue what you're talking about. Who the fuck do you think you are? I remember being very upset by it. A number of the outbursts by Mr Pritchard that we've heard about seem to follow a sort of pattern. He has, on several occasions, sought to change arrangements for committee trips. For example, changing his flights, or in one case, during a trip to Los Angeles, trying to change his hotel. Then the clerks refuse because there are strict rules about this stuff and he will fly into a rage. We've been told that house managers know about this because he would often take his angry complaints directly to them. This was seen, we were told, as a means of intimidating the clerks on his committee. Mr Pritchard said we didn't provide him with enough detail to respond, but said, I understand over the past several years the house authorities have addressed numerous complaints about MPs, but they've also informed me they've no record of any complaints against me, and if they had, I'd have been notified. The thing is, clerks tend not to raise formal complaints. Indeed, since 2014, no complaints have been escalated to the point where even mediation is required. Women know what happened to the last clerk to really pursue a case. They've all heard of someone called Emily Commander. She was brilliant. Probably the best line manager I ever had in the House Commons. 
She was incredibly bright, had a very deft way at understanding huge amounts of information very quickly, but she also had the people skills, which I found quite unusual in Clark sometimes, and she was good at managing MPs, which is not always that easy sometimes. Ms Gamada was appointed as the Clerk of the Culture, Media and Sport Committee in 2010. She was lead clerk on perhaps the highest profile ever select committee investigation, the phone hacking inquiry. Oh. Where Rupert Murdoch was attacked with a foam pie. Also on that committee was Paul Farrelly, the Labour MP for Newcastle under Lyme. Now Mr Farrelly and Ms Commander had worked together before. She'd been a clerk on the Science and Technology Committee. They'd even been on a committee visit to Italy in late 2004. Here's what one witness said happened there. He treated her appallingly in front of everyone. He wound her up like a screw and reduced her to tears. The more he upset her, the more he enjoyed it, the more he kept turning the screw. He was very aggressive. It felt like no one had the ability or authority to intervene. Everybody knew it was wrong. When they were reunited on the Culture, Media and Sport Committee, other witnesses have told us that Mr Farrelly started again. He undermined her pretty much at every given opportunity. We were in an awful lot of meetings, and during these meetings, pretty much whenever she opened her mouth, he would undermine her, he would interject, um, but he would call into question pretty much every time she put pen to paper. How do you characterise his attitude towards Emily Commander? Um, aggressive, dismissive, rude, um, and ultimately bullying. And how much of an effect did it have on her? It ground her down. It basically reached crisis point and she could no longer do her job. Uh, he had undermined her and bullied her so much, so regularly, so badly, that she was just left entirely exhausted and incredibly distressed. An email chain obtained by Newsnight summarising the case reveals Ms Commander's testimony to her bosses. I have been anxious about encountering Mr Farrelly. I have repeated nightmares about going on committee visits with Mr Farrelly and being criticised by him for having neglected tiny details. After particularly unpleasant meetings, I have lost my appetite and have, on several occasions, been physically sick. In February 2012, a formal complaint was raised against Mr Farrelly. This was a novelty. The complaints procedure had been introduced just eight months before. This was the so-called respect policy. So an inquiry was set up to be run by a House official and it found two other women had allegations about Mr Farrelly's prior behaviour. Both testified to it. Newsnight has obtained a summary of one of those testimonies. On a number of occasions, I noticed my hand shaking before the meeting of the committee. I began to sleep very badly and lost my appetite. My husband and friends wanted me to go to the doctor and be signed off with stress. The three testimonies gave the House authorities a pattern of behaviour going back eight years. But Newsnight has learned that the House decided that only behaviour which post-dated the adoption of the respect policy should fall within the scope of the investigation. The respect policy, though, was only introduced eight months before. An inquiry which began in February 2012 was only accepting evidence from June 2011 onwards. The testimony of those other two women was simply discarded. The inquiry ruled on Ms Commander's complaint in November 2012. It could only reach a decision on a few of her allegations, but overall it upheld her complaint, concluding there had been an abuse of power or position, unfair treatment and undermining a competent worker by constant criticism. The conduct was offensive and insulting. The process then called for that decision to be considered by the House of Commons Commission, a committee of MPs. Order! Order! Now, the commission was chaired by John Burko, then as now the Speaker of the House. But when they first met in November 2012, they could not reach a decision on what to do. Newsnight has obtained documents logging how a very senior clerk in the House let it be known to the union in the House that Ms Commander should go into mediation with Mr Farrelly. They should sit down and work it out. Because if she didn't, 
The hint was dropped. The Commission would vote to conclude no bullying had taken place. Thank you, Paul Farrelly. So what happened then? Well, the case was allowed to peter out over the next six months. Mr Farrelly wrote an apology in private, and that was it. The case was closed. So here he is in January at the hearing about the BBC's gender pay gap. Still there on the Culture, Media and Sport Committee. Ms Commander has left the House and emigrated. We've put all of this to the House of Commons. The Speaker denies that either he or the Commission ever insisted on mediation. They also point out that when the Farrelly case reached the Commission in November 2012, they actually suspended the respect policy. They came to this view, they said, because investigations were undertaken by a House of Commons official who might be considered to have an interest, and members had no right of appeal if a complaint was upheld, while staff could appeal it if it was dismissed. In other words, they suspended the respect policy in November 2012 and then reformed it because they thought the old respect policy was too tough on MPs. That is Mr Farrelly's reading too. He told Newsnight that the allegations were not upheld by the Commission and the policy under which they were investigated was considered to be so unfair that it was immediately withdrawn and replaced by another policy. He denies any bullying. The House also told us that the respect policy, as it existed in 2011, lacked the required legal underpinning to be used to sanction MPs. Order. There are, once again, discussions about fixing the House's Between HR members, processes, but clerks are not members. hopeful. Let me make it clear. There must be zero tolerance of sexual harassment or bullying here at Westminster or elsewhere. Whether that involves members or their staff or parliamentary staff or those working on or visiting the estate. This is the Speaker, late last year. The same Speaker who was involved in the inquiry into Paul Farrelly. The House of Commons Commission, which I chair, has a duty to provide a safe place to work. He remains, in effect, the boss of all the clerks. But, based on our interviews, his reputation on bullying is not very good. For my part, as Speaker, I am happy to do whatever I can. Others must do likewise. Back in 2010, a woman called Kate Ems took up the position of John Burko's private secretary. A major position within the House. But she stood down from that post after less than a year, in early 2011. Her colleagues have told Newsnight that this is because Mr Burko's bullying left her unable to continue in that job. She was signed off sick. House managers had to find her a new role within the House. The House authorities were told she had post-traumatic stress disorder. Accounts of Kate M's experience are widely known among clerks. Witnesses have described Mr Burko shouting at her, undermining her in front of other staff. Her subsequent job was adapted so she would not have to see the speaker. A spokesperson said, The speaker completely and utterly refutes the allegation that he behaved in such a manner, either eight years ago or at any other time. Any suggestion to the contrary is simply untrue. This episode left one slightly strange memento. You see, Kate Ems was the speaker's private secretary when he had his official portrait done. In fact, she was supposed to be in it with him. She posed for the artist. But this painting wasn't revealed until six months after she'd taken her next job. And when it was, it was revealed that her successor had been painted in, in her place. Another woman clerk move. Men suffer in this system too, but women clerks feel particularly vulnerable. Lots told us that the house doesn't have its house in order, and that's why so many of them cast the ultimate vote of no confidence in their own management, and simply choose to leave public service. <laughs>